Hi everyone, welcome to my Design Doodler tutorials. My name is Judy Milne and for those of you that are a member of the Doodler Facebook group you might already be familiar with some of my work and it's through posting on there that I've been invited by John Deere and family to do some tutorials for you so that's exciting. So I've kept these three lessons simple but I hope you enjoy them. They're pretty much all about sketching, some multimedia stuff in there as well and some very simple raw edge applique. I hope I've explained everything clearly but if any of you have any questions please post up on the Facebook group because I'm always hanging about there and I'm more than happy to try and help you out where I can. So all these lessons are about shrooms and uh, I hope you enjoy. We'll get on with lesson one. So for our first design we're going to keep it simple. So in your bottom menu you'll find um, there's load backdrop view backdrop and select backdrop so you want to click on load backdrop and the file it's provided shroom one and open that and um, then go to select backdrop click on it so you get the blue binding window and then go into properties and um, it should be the right size, I've done it so it fits into a 100mm hoop but if you want to change it make sure you click maintain aspect ratio and then it doesn't matter whatever values you put in either of these boxes the proportions of the piece will stay the same so we just want to take the opacity down so we can see what we're doodling and that looks fine so we'll just click off of that this lesson's all about being a bit looser with your arm and um, sketchier with your doodling so I'm going to show you a few tricks along the way so to start with if you want I find it quite handy to have my grid set up at one millimeter squares so this gives you a better idea of your space between your stitches as you doodle so you can come down to the three dots into your settings and then go to grid and you'll see the settings that I have here um, one millimeter spacing and the major grid is 10 millimeters so you get this a uh, box around here so you you know that this is a centimeter square and inside your wee dots that's your millimeter spacing so we're gonna uh, do all the outline just in running stitch and we're going to get a nice sketchy style on it so if you go to your widget and just select um, the running stitch there and then if you go into the length we'll go for the two millimeter length and your default color should just be black and that's fine so I like to digitize I've got this nice big drawing monitor so I'm going to digitize this at a 1 to 3 ratio. Um, if you're doing this on an iPad just do it to whatever size is most comfortable. This gives me, I can kind of get my way around most of it at this size. Just have to move it a wee bit. So back to selecting the, the running stitch and we'll just start here. So what I want you to do, nice loose arms and just try and get a few passes on here. So because we're going very small with this you don't want to go really heavy so three or four passes is about the maximum you want to do on any one side. But we're going to do a wee trick here so when you're uh, coming down the side of here go out and do a little squiggle and we're going to call these doodle noodles so the idea behind doodle noodles are uh, it just gives your design a little bit more interest a bit of movement it's also really good for anyone that say uh, feels like 
they're not very steady with their hands yet on doodling. The great thing about um, doing the sketchy style is it really doesn't matter. So we'll do another doodle noodle up there and then we can do a little one up the top of there. So also check that, uh, I should have said this at the start, but check that um, your snap to anchor is uh, highlighted. So you'll see that there. So make sure that's highlighted. So this little black uh, dot here, this is where you want to start from and that way you won't get any trims if you just anchor to that point. And we'll do another doodle noodle up there. So what I want you to do with this is um, try it a few times and save every design. You don't have to stitch them all but um, as we know the proof's always in the stitching but But try and keep them all and compare them and you'll find the more you do, the looser you'll get with your sketchy lines. So we'll keep the grass quite simple. Like I say, we don't want to go too dense with this, so. So the frame around the outside, we're going to stick to just doing a single line. And what this does is just sets it back from the rest of the design, so it's not going to compete with the outline too much. So you end up with a, a more kind of dynamic drawing. And you'll notice this, say, uh, mushrooms just peeking out the top here again this is another little trick that just breaks up the outline and uh, makes your design a little bit more dynamic a bit more interesting gives it that kind of whimsical illustrative feel to it now you don't have to be too fussy about following the guide I've given you it is purely just that, a guide. Feel free to add your own embellishments. But this one we are going to keep simple um, as we move on to the second and third lesson. We'll be playing with a little bit of applique and um, playing with tea bags and doing a little bit of colour work as well. So we can have uh, all sorts of fun with these. But like I say, for this one, this is just about getting a nice, loose, sketchy feel to your design. Maybe a bit mad on that one there, but that's fine. And up here. So I kind of started from the middle here and worked all the way around this way. As it stitches, it's going to kind of stitch from the middle and go round. It kind of helps to um, avoid any any puckering if you start from one side and it goes out it can start distorting it a wee bit. So there we have, if we go back to one to one and go to your 3D view up here you'll see we have a set of very simple mushrooms. 
So we're now going to fill in the caps of these mushrooms. So go back to 1 to 3 ratio. And again, we'll keep this simple. So go back to your widget. And um, if you select the fill tool there, and just the freehand shape and density, we can name, we'll stick to 0.4 density. So, because we can add a bit of detail to the top of this as well, so you don't want to make it, it too dense. So select a nice, say, funky mushroom colour. So I'm going to go for a nice traditional red. And just simply trace around the shape of that cap. Now again, the good thing about Doodler is we really don't care whether we go over the lines, inside the lines. It all adds to the, to the kind of sketchy look. So we've got one there. And two there. And the third one there. Now as this is a small design, I'm quite happy that my machine's not going to stop between stitching these out. So I'm just going to leave this as is. I am going to maybe just edit round the outsides of these a little bit. So if you select your piece and then um, on your uh, bottom bar here, you can come down to the path edit. So when you do the path edit, you'll notice all the little nodes here. So what you can do then is uh, select one of these nodes and move it around. So we're going to... Uh, just this one's not too bad at all. I think this top one needs um, a little bit of adjustment down here. It sometimes looks quite nice if uh, it stitches and the colour is actually going out of the, the sketchy line. So I'm going to keep that as it is. Now feel free to go and play with these. So uh, you can select that, go into your um, preferences there. And the density is fine, stitch length, you can play around and... Why not just make every one a different pattern? If you've been organised enough to have a... have your swatch, then you can um, choose your patterns from there. So I'll just leave that one as it is. And if you so wish, you can... Uh, go down to the inclination edit as well. So this lets you edit the the direction the stitches go in. So we can move this down so it's going with the shape of the the top of the mushroom. Now you'll notice in the, this view it it looks different but it stitches fine, so again, it's another one of those that the, the proof's always in the stitching, so it's worth just giving it a stitch out to see how we're doing. So we'll leave that one as it is, and um, this one's fine straight as well. This one was f looks nicer at a bit of an angle. So again, if we go into properties here, we can um, choose to put some underlay in. This will just give it a little base to sit on. But as these are actually quite small, it's um, not too 
important, but it's good to just play around with your underlays. So I'm just going to give them all a perpendicular underlay. So we're now going to add some highlights to the top of your mushrooms. So for this, we're going to go to uh, for the bean stitch. So go back to your widget and select the run bean. And for the length, we'll go for two and a half millimeters. For this, we'll go for a nice contrast in color. So this kind of creamy yellow is good. Now you can uh, go a bit freehand here and do what you want. So for this one, I'm just going to follow the inside of the black line, come round and uh, back into the corner and take it into a little spiral. And then we'll move on to the top one. And we'll go from this corner up to the top. Now you can play around with these as much as you want. Do your own patterns. And there is no right or wrong way to do this. But the spirals look quite cute on these ones. And for the last one, we'll go for a big spiral in here. And that's us. So back to your 3D view and one to one. And that's us. We have three nice whimsical little mushrooms. Now these should stitch out the red without any trims. And then once it's stitched out, just trim these lines say, at the end. So I'm now going to save these in uh, the JDX format. So you just go to your left hand menu and press the wee floppy disk here. Save as. You'll notice I already actually have it saved. So um, in this case, you actually are better to go down here or you chance um, duplicating your files. So I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to come down to the three dots and I'm just going to press save. And then it's going to override the last time I saved it. So we'll say OK. And that's me got the new version saved. can also we come up to the right hand menu here and view hoop. So at the moment this hoop's way too big. So we'll go down to the three dots there, back into settings, into hoops, and choose your machine. So mine would be for Pez. And we'll go for the 100 millimeter square. And you'll see this say fits in there perfectly. You can come down to your bottom menu and uh, press select all if you want to move that around to center it in your hoop. Or uh, you can also do this through properties as well. At this point we'll now um, press on the view backdrop and we'll just get rid of the backdrop. So you there have your file now ready to send to your machine. We're just going to save that again. So when I uh, go to send this to my machine, I just go back up to the floppy disk, save as, and uh, I happen to have the brother multi-needle, so that's the option for me. And we'll just call that Shroom 1. And that's me saved the version to go to my machine. So I can either now put that onto a memory stick or I have it saved to my uh, cloud. So I can um, link up at the other end with that. So that's us now finished lesson one. So like I say, um, try these a few times and stitch out a couple and see how they compare and uh, we will see you for lesson two. To turn this into a card you would float your fabric on top of tearaway stabiliser 
and your first run should be a square of just running stitch. Then continue all of the lesson. Trim round your fabric up to the edge of your running stitch and then just slip your card under the hoop. Your last sequence should be a run of blanket stitch. You'll find this under the appliqué tool, just play around with that, but make sure you deselect the placement stitch and the tack down stitch and that way you'll only get the final blanket stitch and remove it from the hoop. Then just carefully tear away your stabiliser. And this leaves you with a really cute card ready to post. So that was a very quick rundown on how to make a card. Um, any questions, again, please get in touch with me over the Facebook group. And thank you very much for watching lesson one. I hope you enjoyed it.